Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, lovely morning and I will talk to you about technical documentation, how can I write them better and why should I care and when I say I, I also mean you. So, I'm Ila Fish, I, I, luckily I don't need to introduce myself too much because Pat did it for me and I only have 10 minutes to cover a lot of things, so let's uh, get right to it. So I believe that anyone can and should write a technical documentation because in the middle of the night when I need to uh, eliminate a production incident, I have a runbook and I really don't care if the runbook is with a fabulous English or a broken one, as, that, as long as it's helpful, that's all I care about. So if you have knowledge, please pass it forward and write documentation. So I believe that if you can't automate it, so just document it. And a lot of things that are uh, that you write in your day-to-day -day can be considered as technical documentation, like system logical design, of course, on-call runbooks, as I just mentioned, code readme, onboarding docs, of course, project learning doc, and even Slack print messages. If you deliver value, if you deliver knowledge, that's uh, uh, amazing. So raise your hands, everyone, if you ever said this sentence or heard this sentence before. <laughs> okay, right? That's it. So. A lot of people say, just read the code and understand what it's about, or the code tells a story. It's not, okay? You need to document, you need to document everything, intentions, reasoning, and even the code. Maybe the code is a spaghetti code on, it's not understandable, so you need to have technical documentation that will help you uh, maintain it better. So why write technical uh, documents? First of all, you need to reduce your work volume. And you can say, hey, reduce. I mean, if I write technical documentation, it wasted time for me, right? Wrong. So I can give you an example from one of my previous jobs. I was approached, since I'm a devil's engineer, I was approached seven or eight times a day uh, about how do I do X and how do I troubleshoot pods in Kubernetes and blah, blah, blah. And the uh, questions were repeatable. So. I've gathered all questions. I created the document of tips and tricks by DevOps, how to troubleshoot things. Once I delivered it, then the amount of approaches I got reduced to one or, time, uh, first or, one or two times a day. So that's amazing for me. And, and basically when people have a procedure to follow instead of bugging you, then uh, it's uh, uh, both amazing for you and for them. And also it's good for communication to managers, right? You, you can show the extent of your work, that you are a team uh, player and really not something uh, that you just write on a CV, right? So uh, that's that. Following that is self-service enablement, right? You will be able to increase their velocity. Uh, I have written a GitLab documentation that I implemented at work, and then people would be able to, could uh, uh, able to uh, adopt it quicker because of that. Also onboarding docs, right? Self-service, people can learn how to do things on their own without having a body to teach them. And the velocity, the doc with troubleshooting that I just mentioned, and even Slack bots with Q&A could really help people. Eliminate production incidents quicker, of course, uh, on call runbooks. And avoid single point of failure or bottleneck, which is you. Because do you really want to go on vacation and still be available for work calls? Or do you want to go on vacation with a clear head? And also, I would say this here, job security is dead, okay? Please don't be this person that uh, battles all the information inside. Just pass the knowledge forward. Uh, it will help uh, make things clear for you or the future you because once you structure things and write them down in a clear manner, it will organize it in your mind uh, as well. And visibility, of course, which is very, very important. It will attract focus to the things that you do at work, which in turn will help progress your career. And uh, lastly, to understand why we're doing things in a certain way because it will help you defend the decisions we were taking and communicate them to others and it will also develop your business mindset and will make you a better engineer because always asking why will result you in striving for the best solution possible. So once we covered the, the why, let's understand how to write a technical project, a technical documentation without being a technical writer. So first of all, you need to know your audience, right? Based on your audience, you will know what needs to be covered and to which extent. So if you write documents for internal use, like system design, or external use for API documentation and stuff like that. 
So what do I write, write about? So for internal use, things that you worked on while you worked on them, right? Because we remember things better uh, when they're fresh in our minds. Things that bugged you. When I worked with GitLab, I actually documented how to talk to support to avoid the ping pong with them and provide the initial uh, information that they need without that ping pong, which is uh, great for my team uh, members. Things that aren't clear uh, or straightforward, like I used GitLab DB version X. Why do I do that if the default is something else? Um, maybe the code is not clear, as I mentioned, so explain the flow with describing uh, actual functions and etc. For external use, so write uh, what is it about, possible use cases and quick start, quirks, issues, things to consider while using this X, and examples, simple and complex to help the user adopt whatever you're talking about. Uh, the next phase is to decide or abide upon documentation type because some companies um, have documentation in a knowledge base like Confluence and some progress to the next level of docs as code which is to interact with docs uh, in IDE and basically have docs fully integrated in the dev tool chain. So you can either uh, just do whatever the company does, or maybe convince the company to go to Docs Code because it will be beneficial for anyone, and I will explain in a bit why. So these are general content guidelines uh, that you should uh, have in any documentation that you write. First of all, table of contents. It is essential for content delivery. And why? Because of the user flow. Everyone, and please tell me otherwise afterwards, but everyone has this flow in mind. And I even actually uh, read an article from 1997 that says that nobody reads, right? They only scan. So first of all, you search for something, right? So that's why you need to have meaningful titles and subheadings. Then you scan the document that you just found, hopefully to find something that will uh, be of use. If not, you navigate uh, to elsewhere, so just have links in, um, in your document to help the user find what, it's, what they're looking for. And uh, think about it like microservices, so each document is on its own, but if they are linked together, it will create like the full picture of things. And uh, luckily, the user would uh, find whatever they're looking for after all this flow. So uh, that's that. Highlights. Um, since nobody reads, right, and they only skim through the document, help them do that by uh, putting stuff that, uh, that are important in bold. And also colors, it is a bit controversial because of accessibility issues and nobody, or uh, not a lot of people are able to read um, um, colors uh, like profoundly with uh, blind colors and stuff like that. So, but in my experience, uh, when, only when I used colors, then people were like, oh, okay, okay. So just have that in mind. Words and sentences. So use short words and more sentences rather than longer words and uh, fewer sentences because it will help uh, scan over the document uh, better. And simple English. People, don't try to be Shakespeare, okay? <laughs> Please don't, okay? Writing simple American English that non-English uh, speakers like me and a lot of other people can easily uh, understand. So these were the general guidelines for documents uh, in uh, can, confluence or any other uh, knowledge base. This applies also for Docs code, and I will cover now more things about Docs code. So first of all, we use Markdown for the win. You will able to use a uh, table of contents and highlights colors too. Uh, it is plain text, so it is human readable. It is uh, easy to write in diff, and it is platform agnostic, which is awesome. Docs folder is in the same uh, code repo, which uh, enables us to have the docs integrated in our dev tool chain, and there's no need to leave the IDE, which is awesome for uh, the engineers. You can have PR review to make sure the doc is in a quality state and to check that the code is actually, that, that the document is actually exists. And also you can do even CI CD, okay? Continuous integration, continuous deployment, same for deployments for production, but for documents. So you can have validations and uh, to make sure that there are no broken links and linters. Uh, and you can also use a, a tool co uh, like Docosaurus that will help you push code to a front end to see the docs in a UI a portal and even have a docs versioning. So if you need that, if you have a lot of documentation, then you can also do that. The next phase is to remember your audience because uh, we first uh, said that you need to know your audience, now you need to remember them while you write. So have user flow in mind while you write a certain section and between sections to have a flow. And also the document order should be 
making sense. So uh, first use the most uh, used parts, write about the most used parts, and then the rarely used ones uh, afterwards. Concept versus tasks. Always think what your audience wants. So sometimes uh, users want to know something, so concepts like information, background, explanations, reasoning, and intentions. And sometimes they want to just do something, how-tos, right? And don't confuse the two and don't mix them in the same document because they don't care at the same moment when they want to do something. So uh, have them separated and cover whatever the user uh, needs. And last but not least, uh, wow, I finished very quickly. I, I, I talk quickly. Uh, I have a lot of time. Okay, I can speak now very slow. Okay, the dry ones were totally different. So, so last but not least, share the document that you've written uh, with others because maybe the document is not that clear or it is clear to you but not to others. Maybe. Others will suggest you to add certain things that you didn't think about to add because for you it is straightforward, but to them not so much. So uh, share the doc with others to make sure that uh, the doc is readable and helpful uh, for others. And please, the next slide, don't read it, okay? It's very busy and it's intended only to take a picture, okay? So I promised you that this presentation is not for technical writers, but if you do want to perfect your English, if you do want to write things in a way that will be in more high quality, then I've consulted with a colleague of mine who's a technical writer, uh, Joshua Schulgasser, and he uh, provided these uh, tips. So if you want to, you can take a picture, going once, going twice, okay. Cool. So basically, that's it. I mean, I covered a lot of things and I covered it quickly and I know, I'm sorry, but, um, and if you couldn't remember anything that I just spoke because I spoke quickly, at least have one thing in mind, that if you say, hey, I'm not a technical writer, I'm not sure how to write things, have this golden rule in mind, provide readers with information they need and send them back to their task as soon as possible. Documentation should be clear, simple, and to the point as as long as the information that you have is helpful, believe me, everyone will thank you. I don't care if you have broken English, fabulous English, just help me, you know, we need to collaborate. Um, and tips for managers. So if you do want to have documentation as part of your day or make sure that your engineers write documentation, then you can have the documentation being a, an integral part of the task. And that way, the task definition of done will be once documentation was added. So I hope that after this presentation, you can say that your code is now well documented and uh, it will be beneficial for everyone. Thank you so much.